today I would like to try to assemble this one-shot timer circuit using some NAND gates. Essentially what a one-shot timer is, is that when the timer is activated or fired, there will be a short delay and then the output will turn back off. So that's what I would like to try to assemble in this short video. So as for parts, we have a the NAND gate chip, a 7400. We have a few resistors, 180 ohms. We have a couple 10K ohm resistors, 51K, 100K. We have a mega ohm. And these larger values of resistors is if the timer delay is too short to see or it's too long, we've got some extra resistor values to swap out. We have a 10 microfarad capacitor. We have a red LED to be able to see the output. Then we have a push button in order to uh, generate the signal that starts the timer countdown. Okay, going back to our schematic, which I found online, we can see we've got a one-shot timer circuit by using three NAND gates. The NAND gate chip that they are used, that this is used on this schematic is actually 4011, but we are using a 7400 series part, which should work just fine. But the layout of the chip is gonna be slightly different. So if we search for our 7400 part, we'll notice that the inside here of the chip and how the individual NAND gates are wired to the pins is slightly different. So we'll reference this uh, chip um, diagram while we wire this up. Hey, I have a breadboard prepared along with the parts and we are hooked up to a USB um, charger adapter which brings 5 volts in. Then we have a 5 volt 3.3 volt uh, converter chip here to bring the voltage down to 3.3 volts. I would like to build this circuit on 3.3 volts for to connect it in with another project I'm working on. So let's go ahead and start placing chips on the board. Now, we'll place our NAND gate chip on the board and the first pins that we need to connect, going back to our schematic, is we see pin 14 goes to VCC, which will be our plus three, and ground goes to pin seven. And in order to do that, these uh, bus bars, we've got bus bars on this breadboard. We've got a red one and a blue one. The red one is connected all the way through and the blue one is connected all the way through. So we've got positive three here and we've got ground here, same on the bottom here. So in order to connect those together, see that's going to be too short. We've got some jumper wires. We're just gonna place some jumper wires into the breadboard to connect the powers and the grounds together. So now this chip will be powered and it is actually powered right now because the power supply is turned on as seen by these uh, power on LED indicators that I added. And going back to our schematic again, the NAND gates the second and third NAND gate, the inputs are connected together. So we'll go back to our, so pins four and five are connected together and 10 and nine, nine and 10 are connected together. So we'll go ahead and place jumpers on those pins. So we've got pins one and two connected together. I'm sorry, not one and two. We have pins five and six. And we also have pins nine and 10. So it's, it's got seven, pin eight, nine, and 10. So these the pins on these chips are numbered starting over in this corner, indicated by this uh, pin one marker here, starting in the bottom, one through seven. And then, begin, and then continuing 8 through 14 on the top. Okay, looking back at our schematic. So we've got the input. We got the first input on the first NAND gate connecting the output on the second NAND gate. So we'll make that jump. So that means we've got pin 1 connecting to pin 6. 
reminder, we're using a chip that has a different pin layout than the uh, chip that's used in the schematic, but it should still work okay. We need to make a jumper between pin one and six. And make one longer. It's got a jumper between pin one and six. And the other pin goes through the push button switch. And I, I also realize another thing, this uh, schematic that I'm looking at is, says it runs off five volts, but that's okay. It should run off 3.3 volts, but the timing on the capacitor and that may be a little bit different. So we've got our switch here and the switch is going to connect directly to pin two. So we will jump the switch to pin two. Now internally, this push button switch, the these two pins are connected and these two pins are connected. So the switch is across either these two bottom pins or these two top pins. And the other side of the switch is going to go to our power supply. Actually, no, that our other side switch is going to go to ground. So we will ground our power, our switch, and it goes through R1. R1 is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So we will bring a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Remember, these two are connected together the bottom and the top. So we'll run a 10 kilo ohm resistor to positive, and this is providing a pull up on this uh, input when the switch is not pushed in. And then we have a capacitor. We have our 10 microfarad capacitor, which goes from the output of NAND gate one to the input on NAND gate two. The, the inputs are tied together. So we are going from pin three to four or five. I think I'll go to pin five since this, is, this capacitor is spaced a little bit differently. Okay, actually, no, I got some pins wrong. It's four and five that are connected together. So let's fix this. Pins four and five are connected together. Two, three, four, and five. And that means this output Yeah, pins four and five are connected together. And pin one goes to the output on pin four. Okay, so this is this jumper's correct. And then our condenser capacitor will go between pin three and then either pin four or five. And then we have a pull down resistor. Well, not actually a pull down, but this is the resistor that sets the discharge, the uh, delay timer, and that's a 51 kilo ohm resistor. Looking at these, I believe this will be our 51 kilo ohm resistor. And that will go to ground from here to I guess we could put it we could put it right there then we have the output from pin which is actually the output of the second NAND gate which is pin 6 and that's going to jump to either 9 or 10 it jumps to the two the two inputs are tied together so you have an output and this I'll just use one of these short jumper cables that I've got. And this will go to one of these two. These two inputs are shorted together. So essentially it's turning, when you short the two inputs to this NAND gate, you're essentially turning it into a, uh, an inverter. 
it basically inverts whatever signal you put it. If you put a high in, it gives you a low out. If you put a low in, it gives you a high out. And then from that, from pin 10, so we'll set up our LED. So we have an LED to indicate our output. And we have a 180 ohm resistor, a current limiting resistor, so we don't blow out our LED. These LEDs are polarized, so if you can look at these, an easy way to tell, if you look through the LED itself, you'll notice that one side inside the LED, if you shine a light through it, is larger than the other. The larger side is negative. Another way to tell, there's a few ways to tell, and if you notice, it's kind of hard to see this, but one of the sides of the LED is flat. This is also, this is how you, what indicates the negative. And then one more indicator is, is that the positive lead, the anode, is longer than the cathode. The cathode is the negative lead. So put that in. If we just want to test our LED to see if it works, let's just jumper the LED to our 3 volts, 3.3 volts. And that's interesting. I'm not getting anything. Okay, so let's Okay, I need to check why the LED is not working. Positive negative. Those are all correct. So what is wrong with our LED? Oh, you know what? That's the wrong resistor. This is a one mega ohm. We definitely will not see the LED. So this is the 180 ohm resistor. That would be why. There, and our LED works just fine. Okay, we're gonna take our LED and we're gonna tie it to the NAND gate output, the third NAND gate output which is pin number eight. So that will be tied here. Now, if I did this right, and if the circuit is working correctly, if I push the button, we hope if I plug it into the correct pin, if I push the button, we have a short delay. And it is not quite working the way I thought. So let's troubleshoot this little bit. And it's kind of flickering. I wonder if something's oscillating. Okay, we have 3.3 volts. We have our capacitor, we have our resistor. And See, if I push the button, the button should be the trigger that starts everything. Oh, I know what's going on. This pull-down, this pull-up resistor should be here. Great, works. Um, I had the pull-up resistor on the other side of the switch, so the input to the NAND gate was floating when the switch was not pushed in. So anyway, it works. So if I push it, you'll notice after a brief second, the LED turns off. So if, if we want to increase the delay, so we have a 51 kilo ohm resistor here. I'm going to substitute it for 100K. I'm going to put this 100K ohm resistor in. This should double this time. And it sort of doubles the time. Okay, we're going to put, bring this up another level. Let's put the 1 mega ohm. So the 1 mega ohm is 1,000,000 ohm ohms and we will put that resistor in 
and see how long this takes to turn off. Should be about 10 times the delay. So yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, it's about five second delay. So anyway, this is uh, this was a quick tutorial on assembling a one shot timer, and this is essentially a one shot timer. You trigger the input, and then the output turns on, and then there's a short delay, and the output turns off. The chip by itself here uh, will not be able to drive. A heavy current load but if you put a if you want to drive a heavy current load with this kind of a circuit you can add a transistor and then you can add say a relay and then you can power high power you can power 120 volt loads out of the outlet along with this as long as you can power this circuit with 3.3 volts or 5 volts so anyway um, hope this has been useful this has been a quick just a quick uh, tutorial on building a monostable one-shot timer with a few NAND gates and and we'll see you on the next one. Okay very quickly I'd like to do one more shot at a more close-up of this uh, of the project and we'll demonstrate again if we push the button to start we have a, about five seconds two three four five and the LED turns off. So this is the basic wiring. Like I said, I'll put a link to the project in this video's description, and you can take a look at it. And if you do have the parts and do have the interest, uh, attempt to build the circuit yourself.